everybody, it's Lon Seibin, and it's time for your weekly wrap-up, and another week has gone by. It's Monday yet again. I don't know where these weeks go, but we are uh, at the beginning of another one, so it is time for your update on the channel. I want to begin, though, by thanking our latest Patreon supporters, Bob Bowe, John Bargo, Matt England, Victor Sylvester, and Ben Dietzel, who all contributed via Patreon this week. I want to thank all of you for your generous contributions to the channel and to everyone who's contributed and to all of you who watch on a regular basis. So if you were watching this week, uh, you know we put together our $315 AMD powered gaming computer. It was a uh, single chip build, so we didn't have any GPU. We just went off of the internal uh, APU on it. So I had the full live stream posted up there as well as a uh, more concise review of it that I did just so you can get a sense in a shorter video exactly what these APUs are capable of. And if you're not familiar with an APU, it's basically just uh, AMD's version of a modern CPU. So as you know, a lot of Intel chips have the graphics hardware built into them. They're not very fast, but they have them built in so you can uh, get a computer up and running without a graphics card. Uh, these APUs from AMD are a little bit slower on the processing side when you compare dollar for dollar with their Intel equivalent, but the graphics performance is a lot faster, and you'll see that uh, in that video, so definitely check it out. I was really impressed with it, actually. I was surprised it was uh, as good as it was for the price, and we'll talk a little bit more about that in a minute. I also did a follow-up video based on some of your suggestions, which was uh, to see how it did at some multimedia functions. So we ran it as a Plex server and just kind of get a sense as to how much video it could process uh, at once. And I think the magic number is probably two simultaneous transcodes, uh, a little bit iffy on two, definitely good for one. So it is capable of doing uh, some degree of some pretty good video playback, and it also was able to do some H.265 video also. And we did something else gaming related. It's almost a game, well, I guess it's E3 week. May as well do a lot of gaming stuff. Uh, we looked at the Game Sir, which is uh, a product that I ha hadn't necessarily avoided, but I hadn't paid a lot of attention to until a lot of you wrote in asking me to check it out. And uh, this is a, an example of uh, many of these uh, somewhat generic unknown brands that contact me all the time looking for me to review their stuff. And I uh, kind of just ignored it for a while, and then I finally heard from a lot of you to say, hey, you really should check it out. So I did. And it's a wireless game controller that works both as a Windows X input device, so it's compatible with your Xbox controller on your PC, uh, as well as having Bluetooth for Android devices, and it works with the PS3 as well. You can check out that video and learn more about it. Pretty reasonably priced, too, at around 40 bucks. So pretty good stuff there. So now some news, and a lot of you have written in to me on this one, and uh, this is about the Plex server coming to the NVIDIA Shield TV. And I was in a press call with NVIDIA earlier this week and got the full lowdown as to how it works. I don't have it yet, unfortunately. They uh, made it sound like it was out and released, and I am still waiting for my consoles to update. As soon as they do update, I will do a video uh, and let you know how it works. But what's really cool about what they're doing here is that uh, they're moving the server functionality over to the Shield. The Shield is capable capable of doing transcoding. And if you've been watching my channel for any length of time, you know how frustrated I've been with these Plex servers that run on NAS devices, but they're uh, really not fast enough running on those hard drives, essentially, to uh, do the video transcoding when you want to take a large video and convert it into something smaller on the fly. Uh, the Shield, which has a pretty powerful GPU and CPU inside, is able to do it. Uh, NVIDIA estimates you'll be able to get one good stream going at a time out of it, provided you're not uh, playing a heavy-duty Android game at the same time. We'll test all these things when uh, this is released. Now, what's interesting is, is that you have a bunch of different ways to store the video. So if you have an NVIDIA Shield Pro, uh, you can store the videos on the hard drive of that device, but you can also mount a NAS device uh, on your network to it. So if you have a NAS like I do and it's not fast enough on its own to do the transcoding, you can run your Plex server on the Shield and have the Shield pull the video files off the NAS. So you're able to do that uh, without using the internal hard drive on the Shield. And they also thought about how to get video files over to it if you do want to store things on the Shield itself and the Shield will mount itself on your network as a network share, so it almost becomes a NAS in of itself, too. So they really thought through a lot of the use cases that people are going to do with this, and I'm very eager to try it out. And I've heard from probably about 20 of you already who are uh, also eager for me to try it out as well. So we'll definitely put it through its paces when it is available very soon. And they're also going to support the Dolby Atmos audio format, too, which I don't have any Atmos equipment here. I have to probably, I mean, it gives me an excuse to buy some Atmos equipment and upgrade my home theater once again. And now it's time for some Q&A, and our first question comes in from Super Big Dog to you, and he's got a good question about the Roku stick and other similar stick devices versus something like a Chromecast. Uh, they all cost about the same, but they function very differently, even though they play the same content. 
uh, on your television. And I, I tend to gravitate towards devices that give me a, an interface on the television. I like having the ability to pick up a remote control, not have to reach for a phone or have my phone somewhere nearby to get everything dialed in. Uh, even though sometimes it's more efficient to browse YouTube on a phone and cast it over to the television. I use my NVIDIA Shield, which has a uh, Chromecast functionality built in. But uh, I don't know, I just like having the interface in front of me and that's what I, I tend to gravitate more towards those kinds of devices. And what's interesting about the Roku stick is that on a lot of apps, it does function like a Chromecast would anyhow. So you get the Chromecast functionality, uh, at least with Netflix and YouTube, and I'm sure a bunch of other apps too, uh, yet you also have the interface for when you want to uh, interact with the television directly. So it will be interesting to see what Google does with Chromecast moving forward. I wonder if we might see uh, some stripped down version of Android TV start running on these devices from Google because we see now uh, what you can do for 35 bucks. Amazon, of course, has got a full uh, Android installation on their stick for $40. So I think we might see some changes coming to the Chromecast at some point. Don't quote me, I'm just speculating, but I think that's where it'll end up because I really think people like having the interface uh, on their television, especially when you can get that interface for the same price as a device that doesn't have it. So uh, those are my two cents on that one. And our next question is one of these representative sample questions about uh, my PC build. I know every time I do a PC build on the channel, you get a million opinions, which is fine, but I, I brace for impact because I know I'll get a lot of interesting comments on these videos when I do them. And a lot of folks wrote in saying, well, why don't you just go out and buy some used stuff and uh, piece it together with a more powerful machine for less money? And that's definitely something you can do. I just think that everyone's experience with that will be a lot different. And I like to look at reviewing products that are currently out in the marketplace that are available to consumers. And I know a lot of people come to my channel looking to see if the marketing language from the company about their product matches up with uh, what the real life experience is. So that's the angle that I take. I could certainly go out and try to find some pieces and build a used computer, but my experience will be very, very different than what you might experience trying to do the same thing. So it's harder to replicate uh, something that a lot of consumers at scale will recognize. And that's kind of the focus of my channel. Occasionally I might do something like that. And maybe if I come across some old parts somewhere, uh, we can try putting something like that together. But it'll be very hard for me to do something here and then have you go out and do the same thing because you're not gonna find uh, the same used computer that I will in your neck of the woods. So that's why I stick to uh, doing new stuff like you just saw. But I would like some suggestions on uh, some other future builds that we can do because PNY sent over a couple of inexpensive GPUs. So I was thinking about maybe doing a small inexpensive Intel build at some point. So send over your part ideas and maybe in a couple of weeks we'll uh, start experimenting with that a little bit. And our next question comes in from Andrew Meyer. And during our live stream, I talked about a website called kingwin.net that I'm sure a lot of you have been familiar with. And uh, they're like an eBay that uh, sells keys for software, digital keys for software. Software. And these are all keys that uh, supposedly all work on the platforms that they're being sold on. So there's a lot of Steam games on there. And there was actually a great article, I think maybe Kotaku did it, one of the gaming websites did, where they kind of went through and researched uh, where these keys were coming from. And in the case of a lot of these Steam games, they were coming from uh, journalists and other folks who were given free Steam keys for review and then turned around and sold them uh, for pennies on the dollar versus a new copy. And it was really kind of unfair to the software developers. And in addition to all those games and stuff, they also have a huge amount of Windows 10 license licenses, uh, most of the time the professional edition for around 30 bucks or less. Now you can, when you buy the key from them, uh, you can spend an extra couple bucks and get a guarantee that the key will work because you're not buying the key from King when you're buying it from, from, from some seller that comes across uh, some keys. So at, at, in the interest of experimenting on this uh, platform, I bought a key for our gaming PC here and I got this uh, when I was completed with the transaction. And they have one of these things where you have to load up your little account with money and then of course the uh, numbers never divide properly. So now I got two bucks sitting in their uh, little bank there forever. But uh, you get this little label sticker. It's a picture of it actually and then you type in the activation code on your computer and sure enough it actually worked when I did it on my gaming PC. Microsoft activated it. It said you're fine. This is a legitimate key and my Windows copy is now uh, legit on this computer which is great but you know it's still it, it just seems very shady to me. I don't know where this OEM sticker came from. Uh, who's not getting a license now because I activated this and uh, perhaps this is some you know leftover license labels on somebody's big PC order or something but uh, you really don't know where these keys are coming from. My Microsoft at any time could decide just to wipe everything out and be done with it. So you really should be careful uh, spending your money over there. It did work for me, but it might not work for you depending on which seller you get. Uh, this does though speak to the fact that Microsoft has really not been serving the enthusiast market very well. Uh, they have been getting a lot less rigid on uh, their cost of Windows licenses on a lot of PCs out there, many of which we reviewed on the channel, but uh, we can't seem to get the same deal as enthusiasts when we build our own PCs. So a great example is like the Kangaroo Mini PC. For $100, the price of a 
VTL Windows license, you get the computer with the license, which is so crazy that we as builders can't get the same thing. So I would love for Microsoft, even at like $40, it would be reasonable, uh, sell us a copy of Windows Home Edition that we can uh, either load onto a PC or have the ability to move it around to different PCs because uh, even if it's just running on one at a time, it's still a lot less expensive for those of us who build a lot of these things for YouTube channels and other stuff uh, to get up and running. So it would be nice and I think they'd have a lot more legitimate users of their platform, especially given there's such a market for this that so many people are spending uh, $30 on Kingwin and I can't see Microsoft getting any money out of that. So uh, a little bit of money is probably better than nothing, I would say, but who knows? Sometimes big corporations don't think uh, with a lot of common sense, but we'll see. Let's see where this goes, but uh, use kingwin.net at your own risk. So now it's time for a Q&A for you and I want to uh, get a, a little visual aid here. So, oh my gosh, this thing is so heavy. I got this in the other day. <laughs> this is a Linksys router with uh, eight antennas. I think my last one I looked at had six, so they're, they're multiplying. Uh, this is a monster, actually. This has got two 5G radios on board. The two wireless AC radios. You can, you can split up your wireless traffic in your home. I, I imagine the range on it is pretty good, too. It weighs a ton, so I'm eager to be, boot it up and see what works. But I do review a lot of routers on the channel, and what I try not to do is get into the technical weeds. And I know a lot of you are techies, and you want to see all the measurements of signal strength and everything else, but a lot of people who come to my channel are just searching for a router to decide whether or not it's good or not, and I want to be able to serve that audience. So I'm just curious what some of the things you're looking for in router reviews are. I tend to go through the control panel. I do a little bit of uh, speed testing on the desk just to see it can make the uh, minimum wireless AC speeds that we typically expect. But I don't do much more than that. I talk about range a little bit. What I usually do is I kind of put the router in the corner of my house somewhere and then walk around and see how far I can get with it. I mean, those are the kinds of range tests that I do. But it'd be interesting to hear from all of you, uh, maybe just some ideas for very simple things that consumers might be looking for that I should think about in future router reviews. So I have this one and one or two others that I'll be looking at uh, very shortly as well. So let me know what you think about that. So this week, I got a couple of things planned. It is Father's Day weekend coming up, and weekends are when I usually get a lot of my work done. So I'm going to have a little bit of a dearth of content, but I'm trying to get as much done ahead of the weekend that I can kind of queue things up over the next couple of days. So I do have a couple of videos already planned. Uh, one of them is my GoPro session review that's going to go up tomorrow, and uh, that is the little GoPro camera from GoPro. Uh, and we'll be taking a look at that and seeing how it works. This video will be sponsored by Lumoid.com. They're a rental service, so you can go out and rent stuff like this camera from them. And it's a really good fit for, their, for the channel, I think, because we can get our hands on some really good gear that I often have a hard time getting from the manufacturers. I'm not that big of a channel yet. Um, so it's nice to be able to have an outlet for that. And uh, they don't control the editorial content. In fact, they just uh, saw the uh, ad pitch I did at the beginning for them. So it's really a good fit, and uh, hopefully you'll like it. I'm going to adjust the ad pitch if we do any f uh, future videos for them to kind of shorten it up a little bit. So the first one will be a little bit long, but uh, we'll get into our flow as we do with all of our disclaimers too. But I think it's a good fit. Not every video will be from them, but... Uh, uh, a lot of this kind of stuff we will uh, get from Lumoid moving forward. And if you want to help the channel, you can. You can go to lon.tv slash Patreon and make a monthly contribution to the channel. And we also have my YouTube fan funding page at lon.tv. So be sure to check us out over there. And you can shop at Amazon at lon.tv slash Amazon. And all of your sales uh, will go towards helping the channel. And your price won't go up, yet we get a little bit of a uh, percentage of the thing that you bought on there. And if you want to connect with the channel, we've got my email list that's growing very fast, actually. So sign up at lon.tv slash email. I'm going to do a weekly email now where I uh, give you this video as well as all the other ones I did in the prior week. lon.tv slash Facebook is also a great place to go because I'm starting to write little articles and stuff on things that I'm not ready to shoot a video on. So for example, that uh, NVIDIA Shield and Plex, I uh, did a little write-up on that, on my opinions of it. And then when it comes out, we'll actually look at it on a video. Uh, we have the Reddit page at lon.tv slash Reddit, which I have not looked at in a couple of days. I need to get back over there again. And we have the store at lon.tv slash store where you can buy some of the used items that I reviewed here on the channel in prior videos. And that'll do it for this week. I want to thank all of you for watching and commenting. And I've been really bad about comment replies lately because I have just been so busy with the channel and work and the kids and everything else that I just can't get to every single comment. And most of you are really uh, kind about that and understanding. I do read every comment, but I just lack the time sometimes to get everything uh, responded to. But I am looking at everything. I really appreciate everyone's comments on the video length because uh, those really helped because it just about, I think 99% of you said uh, the length was fine. So I'm going to keep everything exactly the way it is. I won't break things up and we'll, we'll try to keep our, our, our videos detailed, yet the appropriate length for the detail that we provide. But do keep your questions and comments coming. I will reply when I can. And if I don't, just leave another comment later and maybe I'll catch that one. This is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by my Patreon supporters. 
you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash Patreon to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.